Welcome back to projectile motion examples for chapter 3. In this example, we have a four-part problem. Um, two of these parts I have saved for later on in the page, so we'll scroll down to them. Uh, but we'll get started on these first two here. Uh, and before we get started, I want to apologize in advance for any intermittent mowing sounds you hear. I didn't expect my neighbor to start mowing at 7 p.m. on a weekend uh, but I do want to try to get this set of videos recorded today. All right, so we have uh, L at the top of a building. So as we go, and I, although I'm going to stop labeling them one through six, we are always going through the same problem-solving process. Step one is to draw a picture and to do so as we are reading through the question. So L is here with their baseball, and they throw with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at a 60 degree angle above the roof edge. Okay, so here's the roof edge and they are throwing at a 60 degree angle above that. So this is what that picture would look like. Okay, and we're told that the building is 30 meters tall. All right, now this time like we have seen in the past, we do have a angled initial velocity. The initial velocity of 20 meters per second cannot go into our equations. What we need instead is the x and y components. So v naught x and v naught y. It is really important that we train ourselves that as soon as we see a vector at an angle, we break it up into components. So in this case, our vertical initial velocity is opposite the 60 degree angle. So to solve for it, we would take 20 sine 60 degrees. And our horizontal piece is adjacent to the angle. And so we would take 20 cosine 60 degrees. So when we solve for both of those, to put in our list of given information, we get 17.3 meters per second, and we get 10 meters per second for the horizontal piece. All right, now all of this came from just reading this first sentence. We also have that the initial height is 30 meters, and the initial position in the horizontal direction we'll just call zero because all we'll really care about is where it lands um, further away sideways. So part A of this problem, once we've made the picture and listed the given information, steps one and two, step three is to rephrase the question. So find blank when blank. We've asked this question before, and so we'll see it again. We're finding the time when the ball reaches the ground, so we're finding t when y equals zero. As always, the reason why we take this step and do the rephrasing is so that we don't have to guess what tool to use, we're just told what tool to use. We should use the y t equation because those are the letters that showed up in the blanks that we filled in. All right, so we want to write the equation before we plug any numbers in. So y equals y naught plus v naught y t minus one half g t squared here in chapter three. So we have a final height of zero, an initial height of 30 plus 17.3 t minus and just to save myself some time, g is 9.8, 1 half times 9.8 is 4.9 t squared. All right, so when we look at this, this question, or this equation, we see that this is the first time in chapter three, but certainly not the last time, that we have to use the quadratic formula that we introduced in chapter two. In this, equation, we recognize that the part attached to t squared is what we will call a 
in the quadratic formula. The part that is attached to t by itself is what we call b. And the part that is all by itself is what we call c. And we need to double check that they're all on the same side of the equation as each other. Because the quadratic formula is t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b means we take negative 17.3 plus or minus, and then in parentheses we have the 17.3 squared minus 4. a is negative 4.9, and c is 30. And all of that, the top and the bottom, all of that is all over 2 times negative 4.9. All right, so to clean things up a bit, negative 17.3 plus or minus. I'm going to do the whole bottom is negative 9.8. And I am going to plug all of this into my calculator. So 17.3 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 30. And I'm going to take the square root of all of that. All right, and in that area, we get 29. Eight. So the plus and the minus means that we get two possible answers. Let's take the plus first. If we add that negative 17.3 plus 29.8 and then divide by negative 9.8, we will get negative 1.27 seconds. And if we take the minus sign, negative 17.3 minus 29.8 all over negative 9.8, we will get positive 4.80 seconds. Now, because there is no time travel yet invented, our answer is going to be the 4.8 seconds. The negative 1.27 is if we were on the ground and we threw at a different angle, it takes one point. 27 seconds to get up to this point, where at that point it would then be moving at 20 meters per second at that 60 degree angle. So you can kind of imagine a giant parabola. Mathematically, both of those equations are when the ball is at zero, but physically, since we started on top of the building, this is the only one that counts. All right, part B, I'm still going to do on this page because part B, very similar to the previous two examples where it's come up, isn't very much steps. But we want to see it one more time for practice. We're finding the distance the ball rolls, so we're finding x when it lands, and so when t equals 4.8 seconds. So we use the xt equation. We plug in the numbers, 0 plus 10 times 4.80 means we get 48 meters for our answer, or 48.0 meters would be fine too. In both cases, we want to do a quick check. If we're at the top of a building and we throw a baseball up, we can watch it as it goes through the air and hits the ground. So a couple of seconds seems reasonable enough. And if we've thrown it pretty far, then it will land farther from the building than the height of the building itself. Both of those are well within reason. All right, so we're going to scroll down to parts C and D, like I mentioned that we would do before. Now we still want to have our initial information. The start of this whole problem has not changed. And so if we remember what we've just done, these are all of the initial pieces of information that we had solved for. All right. Now we're ready to go for part C. In part C, we are confronted with the first time this question shows up in chapter three, although we saw this question in chapter two. When we have the maximum height 
of the ball. That is always the same situation. It's when it stops moving vertically briefly. In section 2.7, when this showed up, the falling objects section from chapter 2, the entire velocity was zero briefly. However, the ball is never going to be completely stationary in the air because it's always going to be moving sideways away from the building. So when we are looking for height, we are finding y. By definition, vertical position change is referred to as height. And when it stops moving vertically, that means when the y component specifically of velocity is equal to zero. That tells us that we're using the vy equation, which we haven't seen in a while, but it's still the same exact process that we've been seeing. So use the vy y equation. All right, so we will write down the equation before we plug numbers into it. That is our step four of our problem solving process. And then we can plug numbers in that we have. We know that it stops moving briefly. We know that the 17.3 component from before is what we're still doing. 2 times 9.8 times the y that we're looking for minus the 30 that we have. So let's clean this up a bit. 0 equals, so 17.3 squared in our calculator is 299.3. And I'm going to use some color to help us see this. The negative 2, point, negative 2 times 9.8 times y is going to be a negative 19.6y. And the negative 2 times 9.8 times negative 30, two negatives make a positive, and we get plus 588. So we're distributing these pieces into the parentheses here. All right, so we can add 19.6y to both sides, and then we get 887.3, and then we will divide both sides by 19.6 to get our answer for the maximum height, 45.3 meters. Now, really important step six check here, really, really useful. We are standing on top of a 30 meter tall building and throwing up at an angle, which means that this number has to be bigger than 30 meters. Very, very good check for us. And that one, we say, hey, that works. That's very key when we're able to for problems like this, if we know that the ball will be higher or lower than it was at the start to check that it is actually um, comparable to the number like we expect it to. All right, and then the last example or the last question for this example, find the whole velocity. I want to make sure we understand what that means because we will see it happen several times. So we are trying to find V and what that really means is we need to find the final x component and the final y component and then create a final triangle so that we can actually measure the amount of speed we have and the angle to get the whole velocity. We need both of those pieces at the end. So we're finding v and when the ball reaches the ground we are talking about the situation when t equals 4.8 zero seconds. That number didn't come out of nowhere. That's from part B above. So you can scroll back in the video if you need to, um, to double check that it's there. All right, so the first thing is Vx is really straightforward because we have this equation that tells us that Vx is just the initial velocity in that direction. So the Vx component is 10 meters per second without much um, issue, so 10. For Vy, we need to use, I should have circled this already, 
we need to use the VYT equation. So we will use that equation. We'll write it down first. So V naught Y minus G T. So our final Y component is 17.3 minus 9.8 times 4.8. A little bit squished, sorry about that. And so we do all that in our calculator and we get negative 29.7 meters per second. That makes sense because if it's uh, coming down from the top of the building, it should be moving. If it's coming down from the top of the building, it should be moving downwards, 29.7. All right. So we have two pieces of information. We need V and um, the hypotenuse and the angle. So that hypotenuse squared is going to be equal to 10 squared plus 29.7 squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. And one really important thing is Pythagoras doesn't care about arrows. He just cares about triangles. And so that minus sign shouldn't actually go into the amount uh, or the length of that side. And so we don't want to confuse ourselves uh, by putting it in because you'd have to have it in the parentheses anyway. And it doesn't change our result from just ignoring it which is easier. So when we take the square root of 10 squared plus 29.7 squared, with that square root, we get 31.3 meters per second. So that is the speed when it hits the ground. And then we also need the angle. So the tangent of the angle as I've drawn it is the opposite side, the 29.7 over the adjacent side, 10. And so the angle is the arc tangent or inverse tangent of all of that. And when we do all of that in our calculator, we get 71 degrees or 71.4 degrees. So with our drawing at an angle and with the angle drawn like this, we do not need to then state in any um, further wording what this looks like. It's already in our drawing. But this would be 71 degrees below the horizontal. This is an up and down situation, and so we don't really want to use the idea of south of east in that same way. This would be 71 degrees below the horizontal, but you don't need to use that phrasing if you've drawn a picture like this. So whole velocity like this means we need the amount of velocity and the direction of velocity, which requires us to draw a picture. If we stop with just this amount, we have not even finished half of what that question is really asking us. And that's something I see a lot of students do on tests, and I want to make sure we know not to do that, that there's a lot more left uh, when we ask about the whole velocity, not just one component of it. All right, this is a pretty long example. That's because it had four different parts, including two that were kind of brand new to us for the chapter. We have a couple of examples left, so I will see you in those next videos.